my first video, which I released a week ago today, has uh, received over a thousand comments. So I just think I thought it was a good opportunity to maybe react to some of those comments, both on my first video and on my follow up video. Um, because I haven't replied in person to any of the comments, even though there's been some fantastic comments on there. But I thought it'd be a good opportunity to um, do that now. And so I'm just going to go to uh, my first video. And um, the pinned comments on top of that video um, is from uh, Dotty Dolly. And I think I think that, that comment kind of sums up maybe the way I'm feeling at the moment. I don't know whether that resonates with you. It's certainly got... A lot of likes and 10 replies and what what Dotty Dolly says is sometimes I think if the door is shut let it stay shut I'm sure life is telling you to do something different and yeah maybe that's maybe that's very true um, I am still focused on trying to find a new role as an accountant um, it is difficult to try and change careers kind of like at this stage in your life it's probably difficult to change careers at any point in your life if you if you kind of used to a certain level of income you know having to go into a different industry at entry level um, um again isn't easy so um you know that's certainly something that um here we go again there's gonna be lots of urns can't help it um so yeah, great, great, great point, Dolly. And uh, I hope that that obviously resonates with everybody else. It's, you know, sometimes life is telling you to, to kind of move on. So um, yes, thank you for that. Um, guy here, so a comment here from Crazy Legs Geo 2866 Currently 58, been trying to find a job for five plus years, resign myself to never being employed again. I know it's very easy to get into that mindset. I mean, I've, I've been out of work for, for four months now. Um, and in some respects, it's kind of been even worse because I've, I've, I've been getting the interviews. So, you know, employers have had a chance to look at my face, speak to me, find out what I'm about. And then, you know, I've been rejected. So <laughs> whether that's worse than just not 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 having any reply at all to your, to your job hunting, I don't know. Um, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're applying for jobs online and never hear back, I, I, I totally get that that's, you know, very... Um, dispiriting but um, you know I've had I've had half a dozen interviews now and uh, you know they've all said to my face yeah you, you, your experience is great you know I really like you really nice guy you get on with everybody and then they turn around and say to the recruiter no he's overqualified you know there's, there's never any hint of that in the interview that I'm overqualified it's just kind of oh yeah your experience is great yeah we, it's, uh, yeah, we really need someone to start really quickly and uh, you, you know you look ideal and then you know, I don't hear anything for a couple of days, which usually isn't a good sign from my experience. And then, um, you know, the recruiter calls back saying, hi, um, you know, afraid it's not good news, blah, blah, blah. They really liked you, but um, yeah, you're overqualified. So <laughs> don't give up, mate. Um, you know, we're all in this together and, uh, you know, just just keep, keep head down and, and, and stick at it. Uh, comment here from uh, user ZR8BJ, I'm not even going to attempt to say the rest of that 52 and an apple engineer for 32 years uh, i've been unemployed for two years and now i've resorted to becoming a taxi driver yeah i mean i was actually at work for about four months um back in 2011 i think it was i just finished my first um interim con contract and i wasn't particularly established as, as, as a contractor you know I didn't really have the relationships with a lot of the recruitment agencies I was just kind of starting out and I think um, my mindset was that I wanted to try and get another permanent job uh, I hadn't really got my head around becoming a contractor at that stage we're talking 13 years ago now um, you know the kids were a lot younger still had a mortgage uh, the wife was only working part-time so there was quite a lot of financial pressure you know back then um, and I, I, I literally took a job at Marks and Spencers uh, over the Christmas period. I started in October uh, and I worked right through to the new year. And to be honest with you, I really enjoyed it. You know, there was literally no stress at all. It was just chatting with customers, having a laugh with your work colleagues and, you know, folding cashmere jumpers all day. 
Uh, yeah, it was minimum wage, which I think was about seven quid an hour back then, but um, you know, it kind of made sure I had money coming in over Christmas. I managed to find another job in, in, in the January, so um, I got back on my feet uh, back then. But uh, yeah, I, 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 would fully, I would fully endorse that comment, you know, just, just try something different, even if it's just for a stopgap, uh, you might really enjoy it, you know, there's no stress. Uh, I always remember a comment from um, a, a John Le Carre novel that I read. I, I, I do, I, I read quite a lot of John Le Carre novels and uh, one of his early books is kind of introducing uh, George Smiley, <coughs> who's one of my favourite uh, characters in the series. And uh, George Smiley is trying to recruit a new, uh, a new, uh, a new trainee into the into the um, secret service. And uh, the comment he said to this this guy that he's recruiting, he was saying that uh, your salary is um, sufficiently low to guarantee congenial company. And I've always remembered that quote. Some of the, some of the nicest people you'll meet are not the best paid. They're just doing ordinary jobs. You know, decent people working hard, and that that, that comment so was stuck with me. And, um, I fully endorse that. You know, um, I haven't ruled out doing that again. To be honest with you, I have looked. Um, they just aren't the jobs anymore. You know, I, I did look at, you know, potentially working at the same Marks and Spencers that I did um, way back in 2011. It's the uh, if, I don't know if you know the area. It's the Hanforth Dean branch. Um, about 20 miles south of Manchester, really nice store. And I worked there for about, you know, three months back in 2000. I really enjoyed it, absolutely loved the people I was working with, got a 20% discount as well. But I've looked again uh, now, there's nothing. You know, back then there were hundreds of jobs. I remember there was jobs all over the country, you know, and particularly at Christmas time. Um, looked, I've, I've looked recently and there's, there's nothing, there's, I think there's, you know, one vacancy to work in the cafe in Stoke-on-Trent or something, which, you know, it just it just seems crazy that there's, there's just nothing out there. So, yeah, um, totally endorse this comment. You know, if, um, just try to just try and do something different. You, you never know; you might really enjoy it, and you don't know where it's going to lead. You know, it, it wasn't the right time for me to kind of like give up my professional career back in 2011. Like I said, the kids were young, had a big mortgage. It wasn't the right time to kind of like. You know, quit my career and just do something you know less stressful. But um, that that's certainly an option as you, as you get later in life, and hopefully your finances are in a bit better shape. Um, so yeah, fully endorse that comment. Um, Kent, man on bike. I'm 57 and work as a lecturer in engineering. I'm absolutely certain that if I lost my job now, I would never get another in the same field. And it's that that's it's. Clearly, it's not just a, um, an issue, you know, in accountancy. I think a lot of people, a lot of you know, people working in the professions, whether it's uh, accountancy, engineering, uh, IT. I'm getting quite a lot of these comments from people who work in IT. Um, you know, you may hit a point in your career where, you know, you might want to change job, but you're just not getting anywhere uh, because, you, you know. Of your age, and, and I fully appreciate that. Whether you know you're in a job that you that you, you're unhappy with, and you, you're desperate to get out, or you're actually unemployed, you know it's um, we're all in the same boat, and it's it's not just any particular industry. It just it just seems to be, you know, affecting affecting a lot of people in in, in different industries at um, you know all over the country. So um, yeah, good point. Um, Jeff in Ireland, Jeff Dublin, Ireland, 1968. Sounds like we were born in the same year. Uh, yes, mate, I'm Jeff from Ireland. I was laid off last year in June. I'm 56 soon. And I've applied for lots of jobs online through direct emailing and recruitment. Three kids and works in engineering, project management and operations. Uh, a few positive interviews, um, but I don't think it's it's kind of worked out for Jeff either. I think he's had a similar experience to me. Um, yeah, you know, you get the interviews, you get yourself all worked up, you build your hopes up and uh, you know, then you just get shot down. And I, you know, I think that's actually worse than, you know, not not getting any interviews. The fact that the senior, they know what you look like, they know what you're about, and they still don't want you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm in there with you, mate. Stick at it. So, Sienna9594, I've been a contractor for many years, too, and I'm very familiar with the oldest person in the room feeling, yeah, where are all the, where are all the oldies? 
Where are all the oldies? They're just not there. They're not working. I know that much. The disturbing thing is, it's not the younger members of these teams that harbour and exclude the ages prejudice. It's the senior members. That's probably true, actually. I think um, there's definitely a bit of, you know, I've got, I've got further up the ladder, so I'm going to pull it up from underneath me. Um, and I think there's also that, that idea that, you know, if, if you haven't made it to a certain level by a certain age, you, you know, you're not committed, you, you, you know, you're a bit of a loser. My, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've held some fairly senior positions, but I've not kind of, not kind of been right up there at the director level. And, and I think that's more down to my personality. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit more of a maverick, you know, you start a YouTube channel. I mean, how, how many accountants do that? Um, so maybe I don't fit the mould of being, you know, like a, a typical FD. So, but again, you know, there's no point in doing the job that you're not suited for. I've, I've never particularly aspired to, to be an FD. I just, I just, it just doesn't, that kind of role doesn't appeal to me. I'd rather, I'd rather be kind of like in a, um, a project role, you know, adding value and getting my, getting my sleeves rolled up and getting my hands dirty than rather than just sat behind a desk and, you know, having, having meetings all day. So, um, yeah, I think sometimes people your own age can be as, as big a problem as, 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 as younger people. Uh, good point. Uh, Jess, Jesse G, I was feeling old in my late 50s and suddenly couldn't face another politically correct team building exercise. Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, I, I've been in, in meetings where, you know, some FD said, right, let's all get a, uh, a pad of post-it notes. So should, you know, the hand out, you know, a stack of post-it notes each and we all had to write down you know 10 ideas and stick them on the wall you know and that's that's just lazy that's 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 just a lazy way of of having a meeting with with your team members it, it's kind of like you know the fd was literally sat there with the feet on the desk and we were all running around the room sticking post-it notes on the pissing wall um yeah great initiative it, it, it just it just it's just pointless it's just pointless it's just window dressing virtue signaling whatever you call it yeah a joke um so jess g says maybe i've lost the plot but it's tough and filthy and filthy sometimes but i'm fitter happier and more happy i assume she's saying so um or maybe a guy i don't know sorry if i just misgendered you there it's uh, i am a, a gen x after all um so yeah to to totally get that and uh, you know um sometimes i think the atmosphere in some of these offices is just is just so ridiculous now um you know you're just constantly walking on eggshells afraid to offend somebody you know i've in my last job i was managing um you know two younger female staff and i, I had to be apps i had to be really careful what i was saying all the time you know one 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 ill-judged comments and you know i'd have been my ass would be in the hr director's office you know sooner than you could say you know jack flash so it it, it is it is, you know, a lot different to when I started working in the nineties. You know, you can make jokes about about anything. You know, uh, in fact, I, I was sometimes quite embarrassed as a as a wet behind the ears twenty something hearing some of the banter in the office. You know, about all sorts. You know, nothing was off off limits. So it's totally different now. You just have to really be careful about what you say. So uh, yeah, good point. Good point. Um, Another comment here from AA Crow. I work in a warehouse doing nights. They will pretty much take anyone regardless of age, no CV. I have a permanent contract and it would be very hard for them to get rid of me. Pay's not bad either for what it is. Something like that could be what you rely on. And again, I agree. You know, um, sometimes, you know, low paid jobs can be really enjoyable. You know, you've a great team of people, you know, no stress, regular income. And quite frankly, not all the, all the bullshit that you get. Um, you know, in a corporate office environment. So, so fully endorse that comment. Good idea. Um, Steve Clayton, I'm in the same position, 52 years old, head of finance, last role, 35 years experience, went for an interview, and my effective manager had six years finance experience. He probably saw me as a threat. Yeah, it's, it, you know, you can't win either, you know, you've got a manager interviewing at the same age that probably thinks you're a bit of a loser because, you know, you're the same age as them and, you know, you're interviewing for a lower role or, you get interviewed by somebody who's uh, half your age and you know doesn't want a, you know a grizzly pain in the bum um, guy in their team that when they can have somebody their own age that's you know better looking than they can flirt with probably so uh, yeah good point yeah, no, nobody's your friend mate when you get to our age 
Um, and just one nice comment. Um, Gadi, you seem like a natural on camera. You're engaging, trustworthy, and entertaining. Oh, thanks, mate. You know, so it's nice to hear that because you know, you know, it's, it's 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 so easy to post a negative comment. You know, you're boring, you're ugly, get get a shave, all the rest of it. And I've tried to ignore those comments, but you know, you don't. No, no one wants to read that. So yeah, thanks for that. Um, it would be great to see you expand your channel and share your accounting experience. Um, this would be a great way to build and follow and even turn YouTube into an income stream. Yeah. All, all, all great points and I, and I am hoping to develop this channel I'm hoping to you know like I said in my in my second video I'm going to build a community of people who are in the same position as me so um, yeah all good so those are comments from the first video um, let's just have a look at some of the comments from uh, the second video that, that I posted um, so Sean Bruce if you have a driving license uh, stagecoach it was stagecoach you become a bus driver they're training you with pay, and once you pass, you get paid 34 grand a year. That's not bad, mate, for driving a bus. Problem is, I've got six points, um, and I got those in the last year. Um, yeah, so I've, I've, I literally went 10 years without any points on my license at all. In the last six months, I've got six points, so I'm literally driving at the speed limit everywhere I go, just pissing everybody off behind me, you know, but I am driving at the speed limit. I do not want to get nine points. Um, my insurance premium doubled back in March, so uh, yeah, less said about that the better. But yeah, good point, mate. If it's 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 an option, isn't it? And that's that's not a bad pay for a bus driver. I, th I think most people wouldn't know that a bus driver was getting that kind of money, 34 k Which um, you know, I appreciate if you if you're watching in North America, thirty four thousand is probably equivalent to forty thousand dollars. You probably think that's not a great salary, but you know you can. You can get by on that in the UK, depending on what your outgoings are. You know, if, you, if you're later in life and you don't have a mortgage and, you know, your kid's growing up, that's that's not a bad salary, to be honest. So, you know, good point, Sean. Uh, career change. It's easy. So, be nice to dogs. Okay, yeah, I do have a dog and I'm very nice to her, even though she's uh, a total psycho. It's easy never to change careers nowadays, or at least um, a sideline. The opportunities are almost limitless. I'd, 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 I'd agree with that. I think you've just got to have the right attitudes. Um, and it, it, it's, it, it's scary as well, isn't it? You know, it depends what your attitude to risk is. I mean, you know, I, I've got quite a good, you know, quite a um, positive attitude to risk is probably the phrase I'm looking for. I'm totally different to my wife. My wife's, you know had the same job since she left school and uh, you know she's happy with that and you know our, our, our personalities complement each other but um, yeah I, 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 I wouldn't say I was risk averse uh, I think um, you, you know it's all about it's all about your attitude isn't it and you know whether you you prepared to um, you know just 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 um, try something different I agree so, uh, go self-employed. Yeah, um, so Paul Lancaster says, best look on the job market, but as a fully qualified accountant, could you not go self-employed? To be honest, mate, that's that's a pretty crowded field as well. There's, there's a lot of people, um, there's a lot of accountants out there who are self-employed. Uh, I don't know, you know, how lucrative it is. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of small businesses that you do the accounts for, you know, can't, can't always afford a lot, you know, to pay a lot to have the have their accounts done, and like I say, it's, it's a crowded marketplace. But um, it, you know, it's certainly an option um, and a, a, a totally valid point. Um, Matt's Matos born. I feel your pain. I'm 53 and struggling to get even the interviews. Jobs have been pulled last minute, and I've been quizzed. And when I've quizzed people in HR or recruiters, they quietly admit that employers want young, cheap, and compliant individuals. Yeah, I think that's I think that's definitely um, something I picked up on. Um, from speaking to my recruiter and from watching um, YouTube creators in, in North America and elsewhere, these jobs are getting advertised and they're interviewing people and then just nothing, nothing happens. I think, I mean, I've, I've, I must admit, I'm, I've been guilty of that in the past, you know, I've kind of interviewed people thinking that there's, there's demand in the business and then, you know, my boss has turned around and said, oh no, we can't afford it or, you know, let's get somebody else to do it or, you know, you're doing it, <laughs> so um, yeah. The jobs, jobs do get pulled, and, and companies do do change their mind, you know. And also, I think recruiters are quite guilty of kind of like once they get a sniff of a role, they'll kind of like really double down on that. You know, they'll, they'll make lots of cold calls, um, saying you know, you know, have you got any 
any um, you know recruitment opportunities that you know any 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 likelihood of that you're going to be recruiting in the future. And even if you get the slightest sniff that there's uh, some recruitment going on, they'll, they'll 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 be ringing candidates and you know fielding CVs, which quite frankly it's just a waste of everyone's time because uh, you know if, if there isn't a real job there, then there's, there's no point sifting CVs and 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 very interviews and you know getting people's hopes if, if there's not a real job so um quite agree you know jobs jobs um they're getting pulled or maybe didn't exist in the first place so um ag says cash in chips and move to south asia i retired i'm early retired by 10 years can live very well on two two and a half k a month um yeah, if 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 if, you, if your life allows you to do that, then it's certainly a valid option. There's, there's certainly cheaper places to live than the UK. Um, that's not an option for me, mate. You know, I've got I've got a family here, and uh, you know, I'm heavily invested in the UK. Um, my ultimate dream is possibly even to move to the US, maybe to you know one of the New England states, maybe like Maine or Massachusetts, but. Um, I don't think that's how, I don't think that's likely to be honest because uh, you know it's not it's not an easy place to get into the US particularly you know when you're older but um, yeah if I, if I was to move abroad it would probably be to North America to be honest um, you know one of the New England states but um, yeah good point good point um, Bernard Davison says I'm from the UK I just wonder where you get the optimism from going to a left wing Conservative Party to a further left wing Labour Party. There are two cheeks of the same arse, as far as I can see. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, the Uni Party, as as um, you know, some of the uh, content creators on YouTube like to call it that I follow, uh, has been in power now forever. You know, from Tony Blair to David Cameron to Theresa May and Fishy Sunak, you know, and now to Keir Starmer. It's just it's just all the same, isn't it? It's just all globalist, you know. Um, bums on seats fill the country with you know immigration to to boost the gdp and that's that's really hurting people who live here already um you know and i mean my, my elder daughter is, is is a nurse or she's just she's going to qualify as a nurse later this later this year and she can't get a job you know as a qualified pediatric nurse she can't get a job because she's been told that um there's so many foreign nurses coming to um, the UK that the hospitals would rather employ somebody uh, with far more experience with the same money as a newly qualified nurse. I mean, that that would be unheard of five years ago, uh, a nurse being unable to get a job in the UK. I mean, she, she's a bright girl. She's, she's, she's got my hustling attitude. So um, I'm hoping she'll, she'll, she'll get there and she, you know, she'll, she'll, she'll find a job, but I, I was really surprised when she told me that um, she was struggling to find a job. She, she, she hasn't qualified as a nurse yet. She finishes university <clears throat> in December, uh, and you know I've, I've kind of, kind of, I'm kind of encouraging her to get a, get a job before she quali- you know, before she finishes a job, um, before she finishes uni. Then she's just got something to walk into. Uh, but she says there's just nothing, um, <clears throat> which is crazy. I mean, if you're not, if you're not, in, you know, if you don't know, if 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 you're not familiar with the um, with nursing. The nursing industry in the UK, you might be you might be horrified to hear that. You, you might just assume that you know if you're a nurse, you can get a job anywhere. But no, it's not the case. It's the same with doctors as well. Uh, I think <clears throat> I think some doctors are struggling to find jobs. Um, it, it just seems insane. Again, it's because you know there's there's people coming from other parts of the world. So it's just, it's just been a familiar theme, unfortunately, in the UK. We would just rather you know steal qualified labour from the third world and train our own people but you know that's where we are so yeah unfortunately mate the uni party is still in control um <clears throat> whether whether Nigel Farage will make a breakthrough in the next five years and things will be radically different by the time of the next election I don't know but um personally I, I'm not holding my breath I think reform is um more of a protest party than anything I, I can't honestly see them forming a government um but we never know, you know, the, the next the next five years might be that insane that, you know, there's, there's a revolution brewing. So <coughs> watch this space, as they say, and subscribe to my channel. Um, 
Dad knew. I've recently quit working for others and I don't ever plan on going back. Good on you. I'm 45 years old and yet to post my first YouTube video. Wishing you the best. All I would say to that is get your iPhone out and record a video uh, and just post it and just see what happens. That's that's what I did this time last week and it's had you know nearly 55,000 views in a week. So uh, yeah, just do it. You can you can learn about editing videos and making them more swish and you know being a bit more presentable on camera, not not you know not picking your nose and coughing and saying uh, every two seconds. Um, all that'll come. You just need to get out there and start recording. Get get some get something on on YouTube. You know, find a niche, find something that you're interested in. I'm interested in this. Um, you know. I want to share my experience of being an older person in the UK trying to find a job. Um, and that's my niche because I don't think everybody else is doing it. Um, so if you've got a niche, there's something that you're passionate about, that you think you can talk about. My, my, my advice is if you, if you can sit and talk about a topic for an hour non-stop, then that's your niche. Because uh, it's obviously something that you're knowledgeable about and you're passionate about. So my advice to you is go for it. Um, you know? Nothing to lose. Um, Yamin6629, great video. The subject is well hidden. Keep sharing your experience. Yeah, no problem. I, yeah, absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. Happy to, you know, happy to continue sharing my experience. I, I, I'm, you know, I know there's there's tens of thousands of people out there in the UK in exactly the same situation as me, and nobody is talking about it. You know, the mainstream media won't talk about it. You know, BBC and Sky News are, t are too busy, you know, maintaining the establishment and, you know, and GB News is, 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 is too busy reporting on, you know, how many illegal migrants have landed in Dover, uh, you know, over the last 24 hours. None of which is particularly relevant to my life, you know. I'm not in favour of illegal, illegal immigration any more than anybody else, but, you know, is it impacting on me? Personally, not really. Um, I trust the authorities to, to, to deal with it and, you know, and, until it starts impacting me personally, then you know I, I, I'd rather that the government focus on the economy, you know, and get some jobs, um, get get people working, you know, than, than endlessly focusing on culture war issues. That's it doesn't help anybody. Um, an interesting perspective here from uh, Oliver Anderson. I'm 30, currently going through a career change after spending 14 years in the same company, working my way up the management ladder. I found all companies don't want to take anyone on unless you've got sexual experience. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting to hear the, the, the problem from the other side of the, of the table, really. I mean, um, I assume Oliver's, well, he's 30, so he's, he's kind of like a, a young millennial. Um, and I think the problem the millennials have got is they haven't got any experience. They, they might be qualified up to the eyeballs, but they don't have the work experience. So, you know, employees have got every, every reason they can, you know, to... to push down wages and you know make people feel grateful for even, even being offered a job if you're older it's because you're overqualified if you're younger it's because you, you don't you don't have any work experience so excellent point Oliver and it, it's, it's it, thank you for for commenting and you know and in, in, in kind of sharing your experience and you know um it's 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 good to hear from people of all of all ages you know if you're just starting out if you're halfway through your career or you're coming to the end of your career um you know please please post a comment on on, on my channel it's it's all um it's all welcome. Can write, okay. It's this video's um, going to be one of the longest ones. It's at thirty minutes now, so I think we better wrap up, haven't we? Last comment, um, dude. Don't start your video like this, asking for subs. <laughs> um, I don't remember. Don't remember doing that. Uh, start with what you said in your thumbnail. Ask for all the subs in the middle or at the end. To be honest with you, mate, I'm not. I'm not chasing subs. Um, what I've, what I understand from running a YouTube channel is that the views are more important than the subs, you know, um, it, it's, 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 like, it's, it's like the old, um, you know, when you're a, an accountant, the, 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 the mantra is um, turnover is vanity, profit is sanity, cash is king. And I think you can apply that to YouTube in that, um, you know, subscribers is vanity, comments is sanity views a king <laughs> going out in the end yeah so i, I you know I'm, I'm more i'm more 
interested in people watching my content and commenting and engaging with what I have to say because I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not I'm not just putting content out there just to get subs you know what's the point of that I want to enjoy what I'm doing and I absolutely love going into my YouTube account and you know there's another 20 comments being posted in the, in the last half hour and I just love reading them and it, it's it's fantastic I've, I've really really enjoyed uh, this journey so far so um so thank you for that. So I'm, I'm going to wrap up because I think if you if you got this far in the video, then um, well done, thank you. So um, yeah, it's clearly a lot of people out there in exactly the same boat as myself, and it, it's been wonderful to read your comments. So um, just to wrap up, if you haven't seen my first two videos yet, I'm going to post them here. So click on the link, and uh, hopefully um, um, again you'll um, you'll join me for my next video and hopefully you've enjoyed this and uh, you know stay strong and um, good luck cheerio